please, again, please help yourself. Come on in. So, Hi. Hey, Paul. Uh, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. All right. How's that, Good to see you. All right. For those of you who don't know me, and I think everyone does, uh, my name is Marla Mentor. I am currently serving as the president of the Board of Directors for the Hamilton Area Chamber of Commerce. Long title. Um, thank you for coming. This, uh, as you've seen in the emails that we have sent out over the past couple of weeks, our board was discussing um, things that really set our community apart from others. And at the end of the day, um, we have a lot of great things in our community, but it all goes back to the people. And uh, in fact, we had some uh, we had some people in this past week that we were meeting about some potential uh, business and industry. And you get we we had 20 minutes to make a presentation to sell them on house. And uh, one of the one of the things that we really um, <coughs> narrowed down in a hurry was uh, we felt like, as with this meeting, what really sets us apart are the people and the willingness of the people of our, in our community to volunteer. And that is where our agencies come in, um, that all of you spend so much time working and giving, um, because I think the rest of you sitting around the table and, and behind me here. Um, I think our, our paychecks rate about the same every month when they come in from our different organizations. Um, so what we do, we all do uh, as a labor of, of love and for betterment of our community. Uh, so tonight we wanted to just take uh, and let each organization have an opportunity to tell a little bit about what they did, who you are, what your goals and missions are, uh, when you meet, etc. cetera. Uh, just to give everyone an opportunity uh, because we have many organizations um, that are familiar, uh, names to people, but they may not know exactly uh, what those individual missions are and many of them are similar. Uh, and obviously with the end goal, again, of, of, a be of betterment of our community. So um, what I'm gonna do is, I know Mike's got to get going. Uh, He's got, he's got a meeting he's got to move on to, uh, and then we've got a couple of others that will be coming in here shortly. So uh, Mike Schatz is here with the Lions Club, so I'm going to let Mike start, uh, even, even though I know he can do <laughs> but I'm going to let Mike start. That's what happens you would do that. I would you? do that, so no pressure, but please, please go ahead, Mike. Please okay. Uh, I'm Mike Schatz, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm with the Lions Club. And I'm currently serving as a treasurer of the Lions Club, which is kind of a permanent position, I guess you could say. The Lions Club is a service organization. It's a nationwide organization. And we've got clubs in surrounding communities. There's a huge club in Brilliant, uh, and there's one in Winfield. You know anything about the one in Brilliant, Beth? I don't know. A little bit. Okay. I've seen that one a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're a small organization. We've only been in Hamilton uh, a little over three years now. so. And actually, we only have 11 members. And there's about seven or eight that's active. We've got uh, four or five that pay their dues and have never been to a meeting, actually. And we're looking for something to serve. And that's why we're a service organization. That's why we were uh, brought together and were formed in, formed in Hamilton. Just to let you know, we meet on nights. I think we're about the only organization that meets at nights. We meet at uh, first and third at the public library every Tuesday, every first and third Tuesday night at the library at 7 o'clock. Uh, man, our programs, uh, this Saturday we'll be serving a, a pancake <coughs> breakfast for the Hamilton Cleanup Day. We'll be doing it free of charge, so maybe you come by and grab something to eat. And we do that. We've helped several people in the community. We don't have any real large projects. We're looking to do one, and mainly we don't have the facility to do some of the things in that we want to do. <coughs> I wish we did. Uh, but if uh, anyone, anyone, anybody wants to draft us, uh, if the chamber needs us, to recruit us, I mean, we're there. We the ones we've got are hardworking people, and uh, we want to do something for Hamilton, and that's what we're here for. But uh, come out to the Hamilton cleanup day, come back and get a free breakfast Saturday. But like I said, we're willing to do something, but we're really looking for a major project, and be it in cooperation with someone else or not. But we're looking for something to do because we want to grow our membership. 
Good deal. Thank you. Anybody got any questions for Mike? No, but I do have a comment. Paul, are you going across the street tonight? Are you going to church tonight? No, no, I sent you in tonight, by the way. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, okay. we're supposed to be there at uh, 7 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. you, uh, you I won't have so, to rush out. Sorry, are you going to go, you gonna be going with him? No, I, I don't think I'll go to you. Okay, okay. But, but since I've already... I was going to let you... Yeah, I was going to say, I'll let you go since next. Since I've already interrupted the meeting, Mike, Saturday, <laughs> I'm going to go to the breakfast yeah. uh, Saturday morning, but if you'll assign me to a team, I'll come after breakfast. Well, I'm not doing the actual cleanup, but okay. I'll volunteer. Well, you are just no help at all to me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all we're doing is cooking. The mayor board will be assigning teams, okay. and we'll be there also set up in is the, that uh, the atrium, atrium. Yeah. If, if in you the wanna, atrium at the church. If you want to put me down on a team, because I probably won't get there when y'all first head out, but if you'll let me know where to go when I get there, I will go up one of the Paul's right here. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Davis. Paul Davis. I'll have Pat put you in the team. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody got anything else for Mark? Thank you. We appreciate you coming. Appreciate what the Lions Club. Oh, seriously, no. if you need something, let us know. I mean, we're, we're looking for something. Well, today. we've got, um, we have got Fall Fest coming, and it is going to be a challenge this year um, because we're basically getting to completely rearrange Fall Fest from what it's been. And um, to but have... You've help, got electrical outlets and things like we that. We do have electrical out. outlets. So, uh, and I have been assured by the mayor that before he lets the contractor go and they sign off on everything, that we will have the opportunity to go through and do some testing on those. So I told them I wasn't going to be the one to plug them, so just so they know. But yes, trust me, if you make an offer, Samuel will tell you, we will take you up on it. Okay, so, yes, sir. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm going to go on around the table. Alan, if you'd like to introduce yourself, and we'll just let you go from there. I'm Alan Slusher. I'm the president of Quantas Club, and I have Todd with me as the Vice President of Quantas Club, both by default because we weren't <laughs> present. <laughs> 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 That is our, that is our club rule. If you're absent, you become president. Yeah, become, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we are with the Qantas Club, and Qantas Club was started um, approximately 100 years ago by some businessmen who were looking for a fraternal organization. Uh, I find it odd they were looking for a fraternal organization that didn't have any involvement in selling insurance, and I'm in the insurance business. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's odd that I went up with the Qantas Club. Um, but they were businessmen who wanted to serve the community, promote their business, but serve the community as a whole. Uh, internationally, uh, Qantas Club does uh, lots of projects to serve children, primarily to serve children. Uh, there's some uh, eliminate, eliminate projects that help eliminate uh, childhood diseases. Here locally, we focus on uh, some fundraising projects that will support, support some things locally, uh, primarily high school kids, uh, and then in general, other, other things. I'm going to let Beth add anything if I leave anything out, but we do a few fundraisers right now, uh, concession stand, which we've been involved in for 30 years at Dixie Youth Ball Field. All those proceeds, minus a donation that we really go back, that goes back to Dixie Youth, goes to two scholarships for seniors at Hamilton High School. Uh, we're currently doing, uh, and have been doing for several years, a 5K run in conjunction with the Lahatchee Fall Festival. And uh, I need to find out the exact the date. It's the last Saturday in October. Last Saturday. I know you told us that last time you came to our club. The last Saturday in October? Yes. So we do that. That was started for one fundraiser, one uh, particular thing, but I don't think we really have a focus for it right now, but we do use it for, for some other avenues. Uh, we do a smoked turkey sales from October through November, and those proceeds uh, will go to food baskets uh, that we distribute throughout the community. Uh, and I'm trying to remember, Beth, if you have me out, what else do we use? You that, touched on the majority of it. Those are our three major fundraisers, the concession stand, uh, the run, and the turkey sales. Um, we do provide two scholarships to two Hamilton High School seniors from uh, the, the proceeds of those fundraisers. We always make an annual contribution to the prom. Um, we make a contribution annually to the Boy Scouts. Um, as Alan mentioned, we prepare approximately 30 food baskets at Christmas, and we normally get uh, our lead list from um, DHR and from the school system for families that need that. And, and once again, our priority is towards um, age children from birth all the way up through college. So that's the kind of our, our focus area. 
And then, um, as Alan had mentioned, the run was initially set up for us to fund scholarships for dual enrollment. At one time, Hamilton, ha Hamilton High School was um, partnering with Bevel to provide that dual enrollment service. Currently, they're not doing that. We hope that that you know, is up and running again, and we'll provide those scholarships once again for those students that are interested in doing the dual enrollment process. Um, and as Alan mentioned, um, we host the concession stand in conjunction with Dixie Youth, and part of those proceeds go back to Dixie Youth, and then the other uh, fund those other projects that we have. So that's pretty much it. Good deal. Y'all meet. We meet every Monday at noon at Nellie's right now. That's been a struggle to find a meeting place. Right now, we're, we lost our old location, so we're in the Nellie's right now. <coughs> okay. All right. Any questions for either Alan or Beth? And as Mike mentioned, we're all, also looking for good workers as well. Yeah. Uh, and we cross over. I, I work in Lions Club projects sometimes just because of my husband, you know, is in that group. But as always, we're looking for people that are willing to work and give back to the community. And I'll add, if y'all are looking for a big project and you're a small group, we, we'll recruit ours to exactly. join you. And, and go in together on a big project if you yeah. want to talk about that. We'd love to do something like that. Okay, I, along those lines, <clears throat> we just filled out a sheet with everybody's name and phone number or, or the organization's phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about big projects um, and, and I'm glad to meet the Kiwanis and the Lions Club. Um, I, I don't, I, I, know Mar I met Marla last year because of the Salvation Army. There may be someone here <coughs> with the Salvation Army, but um, we need bell ringers at Christmas. So um, mm -hmm. I want to get every I want to get phone numbers to the Lions Club and the Kiwanis Club and whoever else is represented here because I will be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, he will yeah. call you. Yeah. Can you take grumpy workers? Yeah, he will. We take, we take a okay. long, well, maybe not grumpy because that's really the wrong. Grump season. Grump season. Grump season. Yeah. We rule out a couple of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you know that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank Again, thank y'all for what you do in the community. Samuel, like to talk to us about the ramp? Well, yeah, I can talk to us about the ramp. Um, I'm also on the chamber board. And, yeah, uh, like John, which hat do you put on the Yeah, I, yeah. It, in my chamber today, in my ramp today. You can be a little about I chair the leader cast, and, uh, which is an awesome event that the chamber puts on. Um, the ramp, I'm the chief financial officer at the ramp, so I oversee. And, a lot of the happenings there. Um, as far as the impact on the community, I would say that we're kind of a hub for tourism. Uh, before we started moving some of our larger events outside of the city, you know, we would have probably 25,000 people come through Hamilton and spend a weekend per year. Um, since we started moving some of our larger events out of the city, though, that number's dropped between 10 and 12,000. Um, However, our school, we have a school of ministry as well, and it has picked up. So we have people who relocate from most of them for a minimum of two years. Uh, we have currently 150 students, um, and this coming year, our, our, our semester, our school year is from August to May, and we already have more than 150 apps, which I'm wanting to land that number between 250 and 300 in August. Uh, so that's people who will relocate. At best, they'll get part-time jobs. So it's not they're not interrupting the labor force, um, but they do they do spend money here. So that's a, another impact on the economy. Um, and I mean, apart from that, we we have a very very good team right now uh, with health strategies and growth strategies. So we're constantly looking on how we can grow and. Uh, that's, that's where we are. We have built our, our staff and our team over the last two years, and we are putting in some awesome programs uh, this year and coming years. Our, our, we have a good, solid five-year plan um, that will be very positive uh, economically on the, the, the city. Um, but in some of our outreaches, uh, we offer free tutoring for the high school. Um, it's really started picking up. Um, we serve at different events like the cleanup day whenever it's not on a ramp day, on a ramp day which yeah. unfortunately we have a conference this weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and then other things like that, you know. Um, 
So, I'm not sure what else we do. We we do all of the administration on the Christmas for kids. We we uh, Sandy called, and we've been doing that now for two years. DHR kind of handed it off. Uh, I'll elaborate on that a little bit. I think there was some confusion initially about that. Okay, well, you know, Sandy does, Sandy Sandlin at Fred's Pharmacy does all the fundraising, and then uh, the middle school, I think they do the selection and stuff like, you know, and maybe even the purchasing stuff. But all of the communication with the families goes through our administration, um, which is, actually there's not even, it's all volunteers from our students, and uh, which is uh, quite a task. I think it's... Um, anywhere from four to six hundred families. I'm not sure where it was. I think it was six hundred two years ago. Uh, no, 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 I take that back. It was four hundred two years ago, and I think it was closer to six hundred last year. Um, so all of the administration, you know, we, we meet with the individual families when they fill out the app, and then, um, you know, we turn the app over to the middle school, or to whoever does the purchasing, I'm not real sure. And then they give the presents back to us, and so then we do the distribution as well. Um, so we, we do that, and um, I'm not sure what else we do. It's probably got your something. school of performing arts. We, do. Yeah, we do a school of performing arts. Um, if you've seen the Christmas production over the last couple of mm -hmm. years, it's a it's a really nice, fun outreach to the city. Not outreach to the city. It's a whatever it is to the city. You know, um, if you saw the Nutcracker last year. Of course, we didn't have anything to do with the administration. Well, some of our people did, uh, but a lot of the people in it were from our school. Um, you know, so we, you know, we love the arts. Uh, we love the performing arts, uh, dance, drama, plays, stuff like that. So those are things also that we're we're going to continue doing, uh, just because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. Can you think of anything else? Am I leaving anything out? I don't think of, but I'm sure. Y'all do, they do a lot, um, like I say, that people don't realize, um, like I say, I think there was some confusion initially about, especially the, the Christmas for kids program, but um, y'all really took it over when they hit a, they were in a bind out at DHR, and they, I know they searched for different groups, I think they may have talked to some other folks in this room, and it was, it's a massive, massive program. It's, a, it's it's yeah, it very time-consuming, so you're to be commended for taking that that project on and 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 doing a doing a fantastic job with it. So, thank you, Samuel. John, you want to talk about Buddy Hatcher Fall Fest real quick? Sure. Well, uh, let's see. This year will be our ninth annual Buddy Hatcher River Fall Fest. Uh, this year we get to rearrange the furniture just a little bit, oh, but uh, okay. we're looking forward to that and and. Uh, New streets, new, new downtown, basically. Um, yeah, we got uh, Arts Krauss and uh, general vendors, and uh, we got live music. Uh, that's pretty good. Live, live music, <coughs> uh, Arts and Krauss, general vendors, food vendors, um, tractors, cars, motorcycles, Indians, uh, which have Indians do a uh, pretty good size display. Uh, it's kind of a highlight of our festival. Um, last Saturday in October, October 25th this year. So. Start starting with the 5K run, starting fun run. Yeah. yeah. So. It's a pretty neat way to kick off the day. So. You can visit uh, www.brff.org for more info. Yeah, we've been getting calls. Yeah. They decide a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but it is uh, just as we had sort of got it, gotten into a groove on how to lay out everything, then it all gets rearranged. Because if you've seen, while downtown it's going to be extremely beautiful, you see the bulb outs, and it's like, okay, how are we going to get traffic to flow through some of those areas? So back to the drawing board, but. As Mike said earlier, with power and uh, not having to drop temporary boards and things like that in that we've that we've dealt with for so long. So, okay, uh, Paul, 
you want to talk to us, like I said, I know you mentioned Salvation Army. You can touch touch on it if you want to touch on Civitans as well, however you want to do it. I'm going to let our president You're going to defer to, okay. For the Civitans, but I, and I really, there isn't much more to say about Salvation Army. I'm not sure I'll be uh, coordinating the bell ringing this year. Um, but if I am, I'm taking names, as I said, and, uh, and, you, and you will hear from me between now and Christmas. We had a tremendous turnout last year uh, uh, and a tremendous support. First National Bank gave us a whole day. Several organizations gave us a whole day or part of a day. The Housing Authority gave us most of a day. There's been some help from firemen. Um, so it was, it was really a wonderful thing. And because the community came forward in such numbers, it was really pretty easy to, to fill in all the blanks. But I can't take that for granted. Uh, we, we may have organizations that can't give, that can't take up eight spots in a day. So uh, this year, um, you are, I'm not going to sell you on the Salvation Army. Most of you know the work it does, um, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer them, but that's really all the, the, that I want to say. And like I say, I'll leave the Civitan part for, for uh, Alicia. Okay. When do you start the bell ringing? Thanksgiving? We, this year, we started the day after Thanksgiving. Um, and we had really had a, short, a shorter season than normal because of the way the holidays fell. But we still managed to break the to, to, it, 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 The contributions were higher this last Christmas than they were the Christmas before by a margin, not, not a huge amount. But it was just being the same with a shorter season made a huge difference. And Hamilton, as I said, we, we actually had more contributions and more money in the buckets than we did the year before by a little bit. But some of the country, because of the weather, you know, it's one of the harshest winters we've had in a long time, uh, most of the country was down and I was really pleased that Hamilton was able to to show up the way it did. Uh, and I believe, let me see if now, I'm getting older so my memory is not what it used to be. Um, between Hamilton, um, Hackleburg, Hale, and uh, Winfield, I believe that we did $24,000. Which is, which is pretty good. And of course, Hamilton's share of that was, was the larger um, uh, population, partly, but uh, just we, we didn't have a, we, I don't think we had an hour that we didn't have a bell ring. Wow. Some of the other places may have had some skips in the day, and that makes a difference. That's fantastic. Any other questions? That's why I say you made anything for Paul. What are those funds used for? Disaster relief. Um, Salvation Army was one of the first people on the ground, um, and, and generally are, at, uh, in Hackleburg in 2000, whatever that was. Oh, now. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> part of that, part of it goes to the disaster relief, a big part of it, probably the majority. We also provide services for the elderly. Um, we provide um, um, clothing, food and clothing for the homeless and hungry, um, a large part. now. Mike, you're involved with uh, the uh, Christian Center. Christian Center, and at one time the Salvation Army, I believe, was providing a good bit of the things that you gave that you that you passed out at the uh, Christian Center, uh, and we do that across the country. So, uh, disaster relief, uh, aid to the needy, aid to the elderly, um, and uh, just a whole bunch of things. That, uh, that, you know. That, that you would think that, that a charity like Salvation Army or Red Cross would be involved in. And I had just turned and asked Mike about the Christian Center of Concern. Is it two days a week? Two days a week, yes. Okay. Wasn't for certain about that. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Paul? Beth, anything else you'd like to add? Any other hats? Do you need to change hats? Uh, no, but I'm glad <laughs> Paul mentioned about the disaster relief. Um, my Lions Club has a foundation that yes. if there are uh, natural disasters like that and other large needs in the community, Kiwanis has the same thing through their international group. There are funds available to support large needs like that in the community. So if y'all know of something like that, then I know for sure Lions Club and Kiwanis Definitely. both have those foundations that can provide that. And they're pretty, it's pretty quick turnaround to get those funds. Yeah, it's, it's actually fairly quick to get that, surprisingly quick. 
Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, when the tornado in 2007 came through, we bought a brought a van in at Hackerberg and uh, made people's eyeglasses. They lost eyeglasses on side. We had oh, wow. optometrists that came up there. They looked at them. We ground the lenses. They picked them out. And it was up there for a week. Wow. That's great. Fantastic. <clears throat> Learn something new ever every time we go to a meeting. Good deal. Miss Donald, you want to go next? I will. Uh, I'm here. I'm the current secretary of the Hamilton Garden Club. We're just a small organization. We meet on the third Thursday of each month uh, from September through May. Uh, we have about 17 members now. I'm probably the youngest. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's just an organization. We study together about different types of flowers and plants for the beautification of homes and gardens. And we like to uh, help promote interest in those types of uh, gardening and the preservation of shrubs, flowers, and birds, and, and uh, aid in the beautification and improvement of, of property throughout the community. Uh, we're just finishing up our last project was uh, contributions to the high school for some of the landscaping that they've been doing there. Uh, we're currently looking for a, a new project to take on also. We've contacted Habitat for Humanity to see if there was a home in the area that we could help with. Uh, and uh, we're also uh, talking to the group with the Hamilton House. I think they're mm -hmm. working with a, a landscape designer out of Winfield right now. But uh, when they get their plans together, we hope to help them out. Uh, we also contribute to uh, Christmas for kids. Uh, we help with the garden at the hospital. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the nursing home has a garden there. That we also uh, help supply plants and, and money to fund. But uh, we make contributions to the Aggie Plaza for some of the landscaping needs that are out there. Hope to do some more of that in the future. What our organization's about. Gardening organization. Any questions for Ms. Donna? Well, again, we appreciate all you do. And you mentioned um, some of the work with Aggie Plaza, and um, Mr. and Ms. Jackson had planned on being here tonight. They came, we had a um, different meeting last, last week, and they gave us an update. And, uh, on, on the project and they asked if I would just give you a brief update tonight so well I've got Aggie Plaza on my mind I'm going to do that for those that don't know they had basically planned on finishing up where they were um, with all they really liked at that point um, was the outdoor classroom the arch area you see the arch going across from Alabama Power and First National Bank well, it had the project had been so well received that they are planning on going ahead and extending from the where the uh, where the LED board is all the way down to uh, to where the high school entrance is, which will completely tie it into uh, the downtown revitalization project. Uh, and from what Miss Jackson said the other day, uh, the other night, they are uh, they are. Uh, well on their way on funding on the different columns and things like that but obviously you know more money is needed because from what they say the uh, one of the largest expenses uh, that is left is the uh, the big iron gates that will go uh, here on military street where the buses go in and out and those have to be able to be rolled across because they're so large you can't you have to have a crane out there every day, I think, to, to swing them open and shut. And then uh, uh, the way I understand the ones that are on 17 will actually open open and close um, store uh, door style. But um, it's amazing. Uh, they were discussing, uh, I asked them if they could give us an estimate on what the project had cost. And uh, they weren't willing to jump out and make an estimate yet. but. It's way over into the six-figure mark, and it's all privately funded. And it's amazing when you stop and you realize that those type of donations have come from, you know, they said the vast majority were either uh, members of the Hamilton community or had ties to the Hamilton community, uh, either as a, uh, you know, uh, either they had family here, <coughs> related through family, or had gone to school here. So uh, it's a, it's been a wonderful addition. And, 
I know they still like some more, but it really just, it, it, it helps beautify our community. And like I say, Don, I know y'all are working on helping with the, uh, with, with the landscaping and those type things. And they mentioned that the Boy Scouts had gotten a grant, I believe, through Alabama Powered, where they're going to be do some, doing some landscaping out there as well. So it's been a true community project. And I referenced the meeting that we had last week. And as we had people in town looking, uh, that was one of the things that we really we emphasized was that you know this 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 is a true community project, uh, whereas you know most of the downtown's been funded by the city. The Aggie Plaza is completely uh, you know completely different in the sense of it is the people coming together to to put together uh, you know funds as well as labor to actually go out there. And so much has been been donated for that project. But again, they wanted to uh, they wanted to let me uh, or ask me if I would to make uh, make sure that we we discuss the Aggie Plaza or not. But if anyone would like to make a donation, they are still accepting donations. Uh, like I say, with the primary expense still being left of, of the of the iron gates that they will they'll be working on. Uh, they are hopeful um, that this project will be finished right about the time school starts. So we will be getting to have a big ribbon cutting for for that event. So that that will be that will be exciting. Um, okay, that covers Aggie Plaza. So while I had that while I had that on my mind, I'm gonna come back. Felicia, would you like to tell us about Silvertans? Sure. I'm gonna stand. I'm, I'm it's like sitting. Okay. Short people have to stand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Felicia Aycock. I'm president of the Civitans, and Paul is my VP man of Civitans. We have a real good group in Civitans. We have um, about every meeting, of course, you know, some meetings is a little less than others, but uh, for the most part, we, we have anywhere from 12 to 15 members show up. We meet on the 1st and the 3rd Tuesdays at Donnelly's at 12. And, um, and Paul, feel free to jump in if I miss something. Um, our mission is to support local projects and to see Hamilton thrive. We give back to the community by giving away um, two $1,000 scholarships to the high school senior. Uh, one is designated to Bevel and the other one is of their choice for the other person to go. We also support annually uh, the Marion County Challenge, Safe Place, Christian Center of Concern, Christmas for Kids, and Domestic Violence Task Force. And then throughout the year, as funds are available, um, we have somebody to come and speak and, you know, ask for a donation for something, then, you know, if it's to where we can, we're, we'll give to that. Um, through supporting all of this, our great fundraisers each year consist of the Vidalia Onion Sale that we have and it's going on now. Um, last year, we upped it because it the onions practically sell themselves, so we upped it to 250 last year, and so we're doing 250 again this year. We also have a, a butt and rib sale around um, September, around Labor Day, and um, then our biggest fundraiser is our Breakfast with Santa, which is held the first Saturday in December at the Bevel Center. We always do really good um, with that. Of course, you know, it's just like anything else from year to year, it varies. But uh, for the most part, we, we do really good for that. And um, you got anything you want to add, Paul? Just the, and, and the, those are the things we do locally. And, and by the way, all we need to get you some onions is your name and phone number. <laughs> <laughs> we can take care of that tonight. The other thing is uh, a, a big part of uh, the reason for the civic hands and, and part of the, the funds that we raise go to support a research center in Birmingham, the headquarters in Birmingham. Uh, that uh, deals with uh, developmental uh, children with developmental problems and even with adults with some de developmental problems. Uh, and one of the things that we support here in Hamilton is the Hamilton Challenge, I believe is what they call it, which is like Special Olympics. Um, so we're, we're involved with uh, the, the Civitans as a, as a body, and it's an international body, is, is involved in research uh, on development issues. That's all. That's all I have. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> When's onions due in? Uh, probably about the, I'm going to say probably about the first week in May. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
It's getting close. Yeah, yeah, a few more weeks. I've already got yours, right? Yeah, you've done hit me up. <laughs> and, I, and I think the 17s might be interested too. If you, if you want to do something in the group, it'd be kind of cool. Kawanis, Lions, and 17s could do something together sometime. It would. I think, we've got I think that it. would be a neat, yeah, figure out yeah. some type of project. It'd be neat. Absolutely. Thank you, Felicia. Mm -hmm. Next is Mr. Ed Mentor with the Northwest Alabama Arts Council. Well, thank you, Marla. If you don't mind, I'll just sit it uh, with your permission. Uh, our activities, well, back in 2002, a decision was made to have an artist presentation at Bevel. It was the first, I guess we'd call it, an art festival. So they got several local artists to come and bring their presentations. Uh, at Bevel Center, it, it was on Saturday, it opened at 9, uh, with six or eight artists with their presentations. At about 20 to 11, the tornado sirens went off, everybody left, and nobody never came back. <laughs> that was the first art festival. Well, in 2004, we became better organized, and we're in our 11th year now. Uh, what do we do? You may know us through the Jerry Brown Arts Festival. Yes, that is one of our primary objectives that we've been with Jerry for several years. Uh, his notoriety, uh, he's more famous outside of Hamilton than he is within Hamilton. I'll show you that in traveling with him throughout uh, Montgomery and several other places. What we have been able to do, we draw about 2,005 to 3,000 people on weekends, on, on the Saturday and Sundays that we have our Jerry Brown Arts Festival. We start early in March because we can get artists that are not committed to other artist schedules throughout the whole summer of the festivals. So being the early bird, they're available to us. Now, we also fight three things, wind, weather, rain, everything else. So we've been through it all. We've been through a near tornado. Uh, mm -hmm. Lights go out, you're in total darkness in an aircraft hangar, nobody can, all you can hear is people talk, you can't see anything. That was exciting. Uh, so we put as much excitement into our projects as we possibly can. Uh, <laughs> what we do is, it's not just a festival and then we're finished for another year. Uh, it is a continuing situation with us. First of all, we go out to our elementary schools throughout Marion County. We'll bring in 30 students who will work with Jerry for two days. Making mugs, making pottery, learning about pottery, seeing Blue the Mule. I mean, they just love this and it's all elementary school kids. And then during the festival, we'll, we'll display all their pottery that they make. The top five, is it top five or top 10, Marlon? I think the top five uh, winners will get special training during the summer in their hometown. We'll have a representative, a certified art teacher go to their hometown and they'll have a summer class on additional artistic work, whether it's pottery, which drawing, whatever. That's just kind of, uh, an escalation of what we're trying to do there. And we also have a program for the high school as well, which we certified, of course, with the budget restraints, Department of Education killed all our programs and needed. So we're trying to keep it alive. We pay the art certified art teacher, we provide all of the material. They go into the schools when time permits testing and things like this, they'll work us in. And it's called Sketching the Future. And we'll take the top uh, uh, renderings the judges will pick out the top three people and we pay them cash money because that one size fits all for those kids. Uh, so we're involved in, in the education part of it continuously. And then, uh, of course, success kind of breeds success. Uh, we, we have now reached a point, we moved out of a, about an eight by 12 room to this. This is part of our office now. We share it with the chamber. We're so happy to do this. Uh, we were able to give scholarships each year uh, to Hamilton, or anyone who wants to apply for them, but most of our, our activity comes from our Hamilton school area. We get a one five hundred dollar scholarship for for a student that we're proud to do each year. And then from this, we decide the interest in another form of art, photography. If you look around the walls, these are some of the Image Masters productions that we have created here. Uh, we happen to uh, have met John Dersham from, uh, Deca uh, not Decatur, but uh, Fort Payne. Fort Payne. Uh, he's an accomplished uh, photographer. He's 30-something years with Eastman Kodak. Kodak, his work has been displayed 
throughout the United States. He travels throughout the United States making photos and having exhibits throughout. We got we met him and he came over to do a seminar for us and he's been with us now for six years. Now he's coming back twice a year rather than just once. Uh, and again, some of the, the uh, work is displayed there on the uh, on our walls. Now we have grown. Our arts council has grown from initially about four to six members when we first started, and now we're in our eleventh year. We're at least thirty-five active members who roll up the sleeves and, and go to work. Uh, it's it is really a challenge. First of all, we can't find a facility large enough to house the artists that want to come in here. Because of our growth, we have been recognized four out of six years as one of the top 20 uh, art festivals in the southeast during the month of March, and that's come from south of the, uh, the South Tourism Association, and it covers 12 states. We're very glad to get all that recognition, but then when the artists apply, we don't have room for them. They keep bouncing us from one building to another one. Now, what we have to do, to get a building, we have to be, it's got to be vacant. We have to go in and clean the building. We have to re make any repairs to electrical. We have to do uh, ADA qualifications on st uh, steps to get, you know, wheelchair accessible. We've got to go through all that. We've got to pay fire inspections. We go on and on and on out of our own expense. So I don't know. Well, we cut down, and there's that 70 to 80 artists when we was in the aircraft hangar out at the airport. Now, because of limited uh, facilities, we're down to about 50. Now, when you turn artists away, they don't reapply their family. So that is a challenge we face every day. Uh, but we continue to move forward with this. Hopefully, we'll find a home somewhere. And um, one of the biggest complaints we get from the artists is that you're never in the same place. Uh, you need a home. Well, we don't have a home, but we'll continue to work on that. And Again, success kind of breeds success. This year we took on the challenge of a ballet, and I will be the first to admit, I was the, uh, wait a minute folks, wait, whoa, come out. Ballet in Hampton, Alabama, whoa, come out. Well, I was convinced that we need to go forth with it, and as it turned out, we had eight performances. I projected, I'm just great with numbers, by the way, let me tell you. I projected about 300 stu uh, students would probably attend best. We had 1,400. Uh, they said eight performances. I said, you're killing it. You'll be dead after the third performance because it's a repeat and everybody's already seen it. We did eight performances, over 400 people per performance at night. So tells you what I know. So it was a very learning process for me uh, to see that many kids come out and everything, and it was an overwhelming success. We want to continue this. So we're going in many areas now, not just Jerry Brown Arts Festival. That's just one. Thing. Now we got the photography. Now we got uh, the photography art. Now we're going in toward performing arts. And one thing I found out, and after uh, 11 years uh, working with uh, the festival. I will say this, is that we're so limited in what we can do individually because we're small. Money is always an issue, uh, but we found out, especially with the ballet, we sat down with Bevel and said, here's what we'd like to do. We can't do it by ourselves. Well, you know, we can't afford to pay thousands of dollars for rental for, you know, this. They joined with us. They made it all happen. So we found out by working together how much you can get accomplished if you can't get done on your, on your own. So we're very pleased and blessed to work with so many organizations. We want to see more of it and taking small projects and making them a major project by working together. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter what hat I wear. That's okay. It's what we accomplish is what's important. And so again, the Arts Council stands ready to assist in areas that we can assist. We do have some dedicated volunteers who will show up, work around the clock, whatever you need. We have those big those type of people with us and we're very fortunate to have them. So if we can keep those numbers up there with our performances, uh, like for the Nutcracker Ballet, if we can keep the numbers up for Jerry Brown Arts Festival, uh, I think that 
what it, what I see from this in working with economic development uh, objectives and things like this, you never know when someone's going to pick up the journal record <coughs> and see some of our pictures. As you notice, there, there are multitude, there, there are buildings, there are outside landscapes, there are multiple things. Someone may just see that, have an interest, want to come here and live. That, of course, is always a possibility. But you never know when they see the culture that we're trying to create here through art and art enhancements. That some companies say, well, that'd be a nice place that we could have, you know, come in retail or something. So we hope to promote our community through arts and these other programs that we provide, and especially the culture part of it, and hope to enhance our community to be the maximum it can possibly be. Are there any questions or anything that I can answer concerning the Arts Council? Uh, where, where do your funds come from? If you don't mind, if that's not too personal. Oh, question. our funding? <clears throat> we get grants. Well, this, let me just put, out, put this out real fast. For us to put on one two-day show uh, or festival, it'll cost us ten to twelve thousand dollars. That's right off the top. Okay. We do it through memberships. We go through grants, and we're very tight uh, on our money. So we charge the artists uh, a cost per booth. Okay. So if we have seventy artists and it's a hundred dollars a booth, so you see there's seven thousand dollars right there to offset our cost and the profits we make. Uh, we, we'll spend several thousands of dollars in just an advertising. So it's, it's kind of event-driven. It is event-driven from year to year. And whatever we have left <coughs> over, we put it over here and save it to apply to next year. But the bad thing of it is, when you're up to 70 and 80 artists and then you're reduced to 40 to 50, mm -hmm. you have to go into your bank, you know, what kind of savings you have to get there. People were very supportive of us. Uh, we have a corporate sponsorship. It's the main uh, thing that drives us. Businesses do support us. Without that, we could not make it. So that's where we stand on that right there. People don't realize how much it costs to have a festival of Jerry Brown's, uh, uh, or a typical of Jerry Brown Arts Festival. So far, we've been able to keep our head above water and we hope to continue so. All right, John? <laughs> is there more room where you're at now than there would be if you got down here in the shopping center at the old Winn Dixie? There's no power. No power. They go, when those pit, those uh, buildings are abandoned, people go in there and strip all the copper wiring out. First thing is out. We find that everywhere we go. We've looked at buildings all over town. Yeah. And very it's very sad. Uh, it's very sad that we don't have a home and cannot accommodate what we could be. We have to make the best of what we have. And it's frustrating. So. But we're noted in Montgomery. Uh, Hamilton is on the books down there. But through the grants and corporate sponsorship <coughs> is our main financial driven goals that we have to do what we do. Any other questions? Thank you, Ed. All right, speaking of multiple hats, Mr. McCracken. Yeah, I gotta go now. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, it's Matt's garden. I think I will too. I don't know, boy, how? Now we know how to clear out the place. Really like but thing. these folks yeah. are going to be talking, seeing this on TV, and they're going to say, well, how rude of them people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I made my announcement. I'm going to go before. Yeah. You were late. <laughs> I was late. I made my announcement tomorrow this afternoon and I had to be a little bit late. Uh, uh, the first uh, thing that I'll talk about is the Relay for Life because it's just in a few days. Uh, this is the 20th Relay that's been held in Marion County. And uh, most of you that have been around Marion County for any time at all know that uh, it peaked and we have declined. Uh, we are in a decline. and. Uh, uh, not that cancer is in a decline, but uh, you know, I don't know if it's complacency, people get tired of doing the same old thing over and over and over, but uh, you know, at one time we would have 50 something teams and raise 130 something thousand dollars or 150 something thousand dollars, and now our goal of, of raising $80,000 looks almost unreachable. Uh, with our 15 teams that we have signed up for this year. And this is across Marion County. 
So think back, uh, those of you in the room and those folks that are going to be watching this on 49countynews.net. Uh, and think about uh, when you were involved with Relay. And at some point, we just turned the faucet off somehow. Uh, so we are having Relay. And Relay will be this Friday night. Uh, there is a survivor's dinner that starts at 4 o'clock. It'll be held at the high school lunchroom. Uh, Northwest Alabama Hospice. Is that name right? Hospice out of Winfield. Hospice of Northwest Alabama uh, sponsors that dinner for the survivors and uh, they're bringing a caterer in for that. Um, we'll move over to the walking track if Mother Nature cooperates with us. Right now I think we've got about a 40% chance of rain for the day but we're prayerfully hopeful that the rain holds off and we're able to do this outside at the track. Uh, a, a long list of entertainment uh, that's lined up. Uh, Josie Beth Jones from here in uh, Hamilton uh, will be singing the national anthem for us and then she's going to do some performances. Uh, Miss Hamilton's going to make an appearance and talk about her platform just a little bit. Uh, we've got a, a gospel group four for one coming to do uh, some music for us. Firstborn Sons will be doing some music. I think Colby Nix is actually part of that but going to break out and do a little music. Um, I should have been prepared and made notes like y'all did. Uh, the Bernie children uh, will be there singing. We've got about six or seven different performers that's, that's, that's going in. And I think Catherine and Ed are working to get that in the paper for... It's in here, uh, man. I can see they had your schedule. <laughs> uh, this is Tuesday. Have you, have you got a Wednesday paper on Tuesday? I know people. <laughs> uh, so, uh, thank you, so much. Thank you so much for uh, being a wonderful secretary. Uh, so, Joseph Beth Jones, Four for One, Firstborn Sons, uh, the Ramp Ministries will be doing some performances. Uh, Angie Allen will be singing, the Bernie Kids, like I said, and, and we hope to have uh, Splunge Creek Bluegrass. We've got them on the, on the agenda list for uh, being there, and if they can get, that's uh, Judge, District Judge Mark Hammett's group. And so they do uh, a lot of bluegrass music, and a lot of people enjoy that. At 9 o'clock, uh, probably still uh, short of the survivors. The survivors take that initial lap when we start at 6 o'clock out at the track. Uh, that is a very uh, emotional time for a lot of folks. Uh, the luminary ceremony starts at 9, and uh, luminaries are these little white bags that's got the American Relay for Life, uh, American Cancer Society's logo on them. And some people take those and decorate them up and color them up and bring them back. We'll place a small amount of sand in the bottom of that and, and light a candle at 9 o'clock. We'll have all those lined around the track and lit in honor or in memory of someone who uh, is battling cancer or has, uh, has uh, passed away uh, as the results of cancer. Uh, also, if it is not too dry, uh, we have been selling sky lanterns, and we have somewhere around 150 of those sky lanterns sold. So uh, it will be very neat if we can see waves of sky lanterns take off. If it's too dry, uh, this part of me <laughs> says we can't do sky lanterns. Uh, but we'll play that by ear, and if we can't let the sky lanterns go, we'll send those sky lanterns back home with them and let people do that when, when the conditions are, are better for that. So uh, the, the rain location is the 30-year-old uh, new gym in Hamilton, yep. and uh, we will uh, yep. just move all of our events over there, and we'll work out something on the luminary ceremony. We will still have it, uh, but we'll just have to work out on where. Well, that one year it rained, and we had to do it kind of on the front porch out there, just lined them all up in rows. Uh, but uh, contributions are still being accepted for the Relay for Life for Marion County. Uh, bank night will be held at First National Bank Thursday afternoon from 3 to about 6 p.m. Uh, even on the event night, a lot of our teams will set up and sell hamburgers and hot dogs and 
drinks and things of that nature, and, and they'll be turning their proceeds in uh, to add to their team fundraising goals. So um, I'm still excited about it. Uh, I, I, I shared with my church uh, back when we first started talking about Relay, uh, I asked anybody in the church that's never been affected by cancer, please raise your hand. And no hands went up. Everybody has been touched with cancer in some shape, form, or fashion. And I just remember 20 years ago uh, when you got that news, it was just all but downhill. And, and today, uh, through research, through treatments, through early detection, things that the Relay for Life supports through the American Cancer Society, uh, people are living long, productive lives uh, with that uh, terrible, terrible disease. Uh, so, support the Relay. Buy a luminary. The luminary bags are five for a five dollar donation. Uh, uh, we'll have one of those bags out for your loved one, uh, and, and you can contact me for those folks that'll see this on TV early enough. Uh, I'll be at the fire department the rest of the week. Uh, Friday, I will spend all day at the track getting things ready for the Relay. So, um, Relay for Life. It's here. And, uh, and and anybody that that as Catherine's writing this for for the paper, uh, there will be opportunities to support the relay even after the relay. We have till August to turn our funds in, and it counts for this year. And so with that, the Aggieland Disc Golfers is what we've been called for several years. Uh, John's been part of that for a few years. Uh, we're teaming up again with uh, Wesley Smith's family. Wesley uh, had cancer. Uh, died at a young age and uh, his uh, uncle uh, loved to play disc golf and so they actually did some disc golf benefits for him uh, back when he was going through all of his treatments and things of that nature uh, for the past four years maybe five we've done a uh, memorial uh, for Wesley Smith in conjunction with the relay so uh, a portion of the proceeds goes and pays the players back some of their entry fees and things of that nature, but a large portion of the proceeds is going uh, directly to the Relay for Life, and, and so uh, that's another uh, opportunity to support uh, cancer uh, research and the Relay for Life there. Uh, questions about the Relay, I guess, before I change hats. Still selling the sky lanterns or are you sold up? Uh, the sky lanterns are, I believe I got a message today that we had another box come in, so we will make <laughs> provisions to sell sky lanterns. If somebody would like sky lanterns, see me at the how much? Harbor. They're $12. $12, okay. And, and they're really neat. Uh, it's just a fire hazard. They're beautiful, especially oh, yeah. when they all start taking off. It's got a little charcoal uh, block in it. And you light that up, and that produces the heat to lift it. And it's it's basically thread and tissue paper that makes a big uh, balloon. And so they just float off, you know, <laughs> flicker in their little flame, and the and they're they're beautiful. Especially last year, uh, I think was the first year we had them, uh -huh. and there was probably about fifty or sixty went off at one time. And then you drink just, those away from all my customers' homes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which way to go, actually. <laughs> we, we watch them. Uh, the relay committee says, Ben's, that they have the, the chief and the assistant chief from, from the fire department in which the town that relay will be held. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to make a determination on whether or not, and really it is. It's uh, Some towns have just simply said we're not going to allow that to happen. But uh, for the most part, these things burn up and fly off into the sunset and never have a problem. How long does it last, the, the little flame thing? I have absolutely no idea till I can't see it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I predict not. some of these probably landed, Seriously. if they landed, if they didn't just burn up, they probably made it to Pea Ridge. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Because uh, the wind they was go blowing up and they last take year. off. Yeah. We had a couple of casualties. We had one or two stuck in a tree nearby the track. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, you know, we, so we watch them really close. Uh, you know, we're, we're not looking to, to burn people's property up by, by no means. Uh, but <coughs> any other relay questions and he's going to change hats new one toy bowl football there you go. <laughs> uh it's almost football season again thank goodness 
why can't we do this 12 months out of the year? Uh, I mean, you know, the, when the national championship's over, people's tweeting all the time. Only, you know, 200 and something days till football season again. 100 and something days till football season again. Uh, I am currently the president of the Hamilton Toy Bowl Football Association. That is the Youth Football Association for the city of Hamilton and the surrounding area. Uh, we are in our going into our tenth year, uh, fully self-supported, uh, and I say that we charge a registration fee for the kids to play football, so they support their own program. Uh, but we uh, do not have to go and ask the city for any money. Uh, we we do reach out to uh, corporate sponsors from time to time for a little football program that we put together and if we get big football games that we have to pay to play here. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're pretty well self-supported in our uh, registration fees, in our concession stand sales during football games, and in our ticket sales during football games, and any other little fundraisers that they have. Um, we are getting ready to go again. We're going to be sending information out, hopefully, uh, to the children um, in the next two weeks or so because our first sign up and I've actually already started getting telephone calls about it but our first sign up date is set for Saturday May the 17th uh, from 9 until noon and that will be held at the Toy Bowl building we have a, a, a block building that we built with our own money and some donations uh, sitting adjacent to the track the Relay for Life committee will have access to that uh, to use as an office space uh, during the relay. But we, we house our equipment in that building and, and we've got bathrooms in that building and it's set up for the sink and an ice machine and, and uh, we've, we've really made some progress. But May 17th from 9 to noon and uh, the late sign up will be June the 19th from 5.30 until 8.30 and I think that's probably a Thursday night. Uh, but uh, what Toy Bowl is able to do each year when we when we close out our year, we're able to uh, look and see our, how much money do we think we need to start buying football, new pants that's torn up, helmets, shoulder pads, and all this kind of stuff. Um, then, we, then we, in turn, go back to the high school football program and make a contribution to them. Because in our eyes, uh, we don't need a lot of money sitting around in the bank. And we hope that each one of the kids that come through our program will end up in the high school program. And so we want to support uh, Coach Stidham and his program uh, at the high school level. And, and uh, you know, he works with us. We're, we're able to use Sargent Stadium to play our football games. And, and uh, we just have a really good working relationship uh, with the high school program there. So uh, football time is almost here. Talk a little bit, if you don't mind, about, uh, you mentioned earlier about the programs, but I know uh, in the past several years, y'all have been able to reach the playoffs and have went through a bid process to get teams to come in. But talk a little bit about that and bringing people into the community once we hit those playoffs. The, our organization is a standalone organization, uh, the Hamilton Youth Football Association. We play football under the umbrella of the North Central Alabama Toy Bowl Association. And there's 22 like us, 22 different individual organizations that do this. And so uh, uh, as your seasons play out, when we get down to the playoff season, you know, they take a certain number to the playoff. And the very last game, is what they refer to as the Super Bowl. And uh, that brings in people from, I have been when we didn't even have a team playing in it, just to go watch the teams that were in it. Uh, so that brings in people. We have organizations as far away as uh, uh, Cordova. We have them from Hackleburg down to Northside, which is in Tuscaloosa County. And then us and of course, Vernon and Sullivan Winfield, you, and all these other places. Um, when you have the Super Bowl in Hamilton, this year we had two teams playing in it, our little peewee teams, and maybe I should explain that. I said youth football. This is youth 
football. We start playing football at six. And, and uh, I have a lot of mamas that say, you really want to put a helmet on my baby at six? You sign him up, we will. Uh, but they're playing against guys their own size. You know, and it's really teaching fundamentals at six and seven. Uh, six, seven, and eight-year-olds play together. The nine and ten-year-olds, that's the peewees. The nine and ten-year-olds play together in the junior division, and the senior division is 11 and 12 years old. And after 12, they're kicked out. They've got to be 12 or less on August the 1st of the year that we're playing. Um, they, they, they've got to go to JV. It's time for them to move on up. Uh, but uh, there, there is a bidding process, and, uh, you know, our corporate board, the NCATA board, has they, they have a blanket insurance policy and they have attorneys on standby and they you know have to keep up with all these safety tips and information and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but so all the organizations that are involved with with the playoffs submit, I will pay this amount of money to be able to play that game on my field. And uh, so, you know, we have paid as high as $7,000 to play a game here, and we've paid as little as uh, $1,500 for, you know, one of the earlier season games uh, as far as the playoff games. Uh, and so and that's when we do, we reach out to the community and say, you know, we'd like to do this, and we kind of <coughs> fill them out ahead of time before we go to bid and find out that we can cover it because we don't want to go in the hole. Um, but it is special. Uh, our peewee team won the championship. For out of the 22 peewee teams, our little peewee team got the big hardware uh, this year, and the, the junior team came in second. We played for the championship, and uh, uh, we was the last loser uh, in <laughs> toy bowl football for the juniors. But uh, it, it is special for those kids to be able to to play on their home field and. You're talking about people love for Hamilton to come to their facility because we take all of the mamas and daddies and grandmamas and granddaddies and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and everybody's paying admission to get in. And then the, they're probably going to eat while they're there. And then when they get ready to leave, they're probably going to stop somewhere out in town and eat again or go shopping or something like that. And so, you know, we estimate probably... 5,000 people or so, uh, counting our own folks, uh, you know, piled in, uh, in 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 relations to to a Super Bowl. Uh, there was a lot of folks, and uh, we was glad to see. So was the chamber. So was the chamber. I'm sure exactly. they were. I'm yeah. sure they were. But the, uh, that's a perfect example. And that's that's why I wanted you to make that point. I mean, that's just a, that's a perfect <clears throat> example of. Number one, we get to show off our facilities that we've got, and we've got excellent facilities. We do. But at the same time, we're showing off our town, we're bringing people in, they're shopping in our stores, eating in our restaurants, and it helps our tax base. Anytime you can have these special events, and we're getting close to that time of the year to where he may have somebody down there ringing a bell, and if they run to Walmart, he may get some of their money, you know? That's right. That's so right. it, I mean, it helps on multiple levels. We'll end up with football and cheerleaders, we'll end up having 120 or so kids in our program. And so you think about that if you put a multiplier of six mm -hmm. for each kid that's going to go watch a ball game. Yep. Had you rather have them over in Cordova watching a ball game or had you rather have them mm -hmm. in Hamilton watching yeah. a ball game? Yeah. So it's not all just about footballers. It's, it's, big, it's big business. Well, even, even at that for, level. Really, for our part, it's really all about football. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for the community. All of the excess and yeah. for the community, yeah. uh, the, the gravy's nice yeah. for, for yeah. the chamber and for the city. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions about toy bowl football? All right. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Appreciate all you do. Um, I have a quick email that I received from uh, Benja Jackson. Benja is the current president of the Coterie Club, and she had a conflict tonight and was not able to make it. Uh, she said that they have several things uh, status-wise that they are trying to get worked out, but she wanted to let everyone know that um, they are concerned with helping the community and have participated in a variety of projects such as Christmas for Kids and Relay for Life. Uh, said that most of their funding is providing scholarships 
that's given to a member of their sister club at the high school, the Las Caritas, uh, and to another uh, worthy senior uh, girl at Hamilton High School. And um, she said the primary goal of the Coterie Club is to show love and concern to those around us and to our community. So um, they're in a, a phase right now where they're trying to get some things reformulated, but she, want, she wanted me to, to pass along to everyone here um, a little bit about what the, the Coterie Club did. Uh, briefly, and I know we've been here just over an hour, so I'm not going to take up a lot of time. Um, just touch on generally what the Chamber does. I think most everyone is familiar with the name of the Chamber of Commerce and associates it most closely uh, with business, obviously. But uh, we feel like we have multiple hats that we wear within the organization. Um, we have shifted in the past couple of years some of our emphasis. Um, as Ed stated a while ago, uh, probably uh, in our most important step over the past couple of years is to uh, have secured this office that the Arts Council and the Chamber shares together. Um, it was a very important move for us for various reasons. We had been previously located at City Hall uh, during the previous administration. And there had been issues and sometimes it's just better off to, to, to get a clean start. And uh, we're very blessed to have this uh, facility that, that we do. Um, that being said, uh, we love the fact that we're on the what we call the main drag out here with our with our uh, lettering in the windows and letting everyone know that, that we're here and, and uh, a vital part of the community. Um, when I took over as president, it's been just over two years ago, we sat down and uh, bless John's heart, he got sent through that three hour meeting and there were some of them I think that were ready to, to wave their white flags by the time we finished, but we really had uh, a really serious meeting about what direction that we wanted our organization to go in and what we wanted to be our focus and we talked tonight a lot about events and things that we have in our community and we felt like that we needed to get back to doing while events are important and events are still a big part of what the chamber does that's not the most important thing that we do and we went back to discussing how we could better serve the community uh, in the sense of helping our businesses uh, helping promote uh, the good things that we had going on about our community, uh, helping coordinate just as what we're, we're talking about here tonight, coordinating, coordinating uh, the things that are ongoing in our community. Um, one of the things that we've really worked hard at is our partnerships with different organizations, primarily uh, with in, uh, retail and commercial industrial recruitment, as well as uh, tourism. Tourism is really free money. Uh, that's really the way that we look at it. Um, we have a lot of things that, that, we, that we are working on. We have multiple websites that we're working on. We have been able, uh, as Ed said, with the Arts Council, we are, the Chamber is uh, primarily funded through our memberships, but we also apply for every grant that we can get our hands on. Um, we are hopeful uh, we are leading the charge, and I think it has been a common theme tonight, um, location for, for different activities, for meeting places. Um, I, think, I think it's very clear that there's, there's a need for a facility in our community. Uh, and the Chamber voted, uh, right I've been right at now, two years ago, to support the Munsingware uh, Civic Center project. We continue, we reaffirm that vote the first of the year. Uh, we are pleased that the mayor and the council have uh, taken it uh, to the point to where all of the environmental studies are being done and the structural studies are being done. Um, so that, you know, we're going to get some definitive answers so we can all move ahead with what's next. But I'm sure Matt would love to know that come Friday night that if it's coming a monsoon, all he's got to do is move his folks over to the Civic Center and he's got an exhibition hall that, you know, he, we can walk and he can, he can have his music and he can go ahead just as planned with the exception of he's got a roof over his head rather than, you know, trying to make do with lighting up luminaries on a front porch. Or you climate know. there to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> that, that works too. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, 
we are we're working and I handed out as we began the meeting tonight um, one of our most important business meetings that we have each year for the, this is the third year in a row we have hosted leader cast it was previously known as chick-fil-a leader cast um, but we do the simulcast we are a location um, that people join us from all over the world uh, and we join in it originates out of Atlanta Georgia and it's a day to where people it's primarily business people come and they are inspired to be better people be better leaders within the community uh, I would encourage you um, I mean, because people that are sitting here at this table, these are the you are the leaders of our community, and we we would love to have you attend and be, and be a part of this. Um, how many opportunities do you get to hear Laura Bush speak?